Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%, a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up in the program, anger in Turkey over the brutal killing of a young university student see protesters taking to the streets, demanding their government do more about violence against women. Also, the bravery of a bereaved mother who's reaching out to disadvantaged youth here in France. And talking about sex, or rather the pornification of sex, and how it impacts the way we view our bodies. But we begin in Turkey, where numerous protests have been held over the brutal murder of a 20-year-old psychology student. Her killing has horrified the nation, with women also taking to social media to recount their own experiences of sexual assault and harassment. In Turkey, women are assassinated. That's the message these protesters want the world to hear as they carry photos of Uzgi Can Aslan, a 20-year-old who was brutally murdered after she tried to stop a man raping her. We are here today to call for this to stop and we won't leave until it does. Some feel it takes a hashtag to be heard. Turkish women have used Twitter to recount their own experiences of sexual harassment under the hashtag Tell Your Story. Lenient sentencing for sexual assault crimes and a lack of reliable statistics have created an environment where violent crimes against women all too often go unpunished. The government is facing calls to better protect women. The ruling AK party is keen to show its listening especially given President Erdogan came under fire just recently for his comments on equality between men and women being unnatural. Parliament held a minute of silence in memory of Özgecan Aslan and two of President Erdogan's daughters visited her family. Our aim is to make sure that these monsters, these villains, will pay the heaviest price possible for what they did. We will follow this closely. The suspect is the man who was driving the minibus the young woman was taking home from university. The minibus driver and his father and another man have been arrested. Now, in the wake of last month's Paris attacks, French officials are looking at what needs to be done to prevent young people from becoming radicalized. One woman has made it her mission to try to get through to young people from troubled neighbourhoods. She's the mother of a French Muslim soldier killed by the Toulouse gunman, Mohamed Marab, back in 2012. For the past three years, Latifa Ibangzi Aten has been going from one deprived neighbourhood to another. This mother lost her son in 2012, a French Muslim soldier who was killed by a radicalised young gunman. Mohamed Mera went on to kill two other soldiers and four civilians, three of them children, outside a Jewish school in Toulouse. Today she's in Sarcelles, outside Paris, to bring her message to these 14-year-olds. A month after the Paris attacks carried out by the Kouachi brothers and Amadi Koulibaly, the focus is on freedom of expression. We're lucky to have this freedom in France, to be able to say what we think. Latifa asks for only one rule for the session, no taboos. Any question can and should be asked. Do you think the Koulibalis are seen in a bad light in France? What they did is unforgivable. These people that we can't, you know, they killed 12 people. What do you think? They've dirtied our name. I'm called Koulibaly too. And because of them, we're going to have less chance of succeeding because we'll be seen badly. Already we're black and we live in ghettos. Whether you're black or white, it's all the same. You're all France's children. The only thing I ask of you, young man, is to work hard and to succeed. <laughs> Students say the meeting's a much needed outlet for their confusion and emotions about January's events. We need to talk all together to give our opinions. I know lots of people here who are lost, and I think this is going to get them back on the right track. At each school she visits, Latifa's struck by how abandoned the young people feel. When I say, you're French, they say, no, France has forgotten us. We don't exist. We need to open up these housing schemes. We need to give them a chance. 
Last year, the class taught her they didn't know the national anthem. Now they have a surprise rendition in store. A small victory for Latifa's cause as she sees the mark she's made on this group. And in other news, American actress Jamie Brewer has made history recently as the first model with Down syndrome to walk a runway during New York Fashion Week. Brewer is best known for the American Horror Story TV franchise. She was recruited to strut her stuff for designer Carrie Hammer as part of the designer's campaign entitled Role Models, Not Runway Models. Now, in recent weeks, there's been a flurry of media debate, including on this show, over the release of the Hollywood film Fifty Shades of Grey. The movie is about a young woman's love affair with a man who indulges in violent sex, but many would say it represents the mainstreaming of softcore porn. It's also sparked a debate about whether such films truly empower a woman or do they drastically distort the way in which we view our bodies? And here to talk to me about that today is Sophie Bramley, a French author and producer of Female Erotica. Sophie, thanks for being with us. How would you describe Female Erotica? I mean, what makes it different to pornography? It's really nothing much. It's uh, the way the camera is uh, focusing on the subjects. Uh, most of the time, men-directed movies are directed at... Um, uh, parts of the bodies and uh, genders that are uh, exciting to men, i.e. Um, if it's a heterosexual movie, the camera will be focusing on whatever is exciting to a man. It's, it's very much driven by men and it's for men, isn't it? It is for men. They, they, uh, I mean, it's only normal. It's not something to criticize because uh, they went into porn to get more excitement uh, and, and it's part of their fantasy. What struck me was that there wasn't uh, the equivalent made by women where, um, you know, they would have uh, camera angles made to cater their desires Give me or their example. fantasies. Give me an example of exactly what you mean by that. I mean, is it more flattering to a woman or, I mean, how do you... No, it's not really about flattering. What struck me first was uh, um, men don't care about women's orgasms. So the fact that they're incredibly phony to look at doesn't make any difference to a man because it, it's not his point, really. Uh, for women, when the woman's part is so phony, it's really hard to relate to it because, yeah, she moans a lot, but it doesn't look anything like the real thing. So um, there's no emotion, and we do need that too, as strange as it may seem for porn movies. Yeah. How did you get involved with making erotica? Well, what happened was that I was uh, working in the internet industries in, um, in music and uh, I, I was used to knowing that uh, the internet was 50% um, towards, um, you know, X-related or adult content, basically. And, uh, and then one day I realized there was um, so much for men and nothing for women. And how come 51% of the population not have anything to uh, look at on the internet. Did they not care? Could it be that women did not care about sexuality? It, it, it really struck me and I just started investigating and, uh, and then I felt like uh, Joan of Arc or something. I just had to do it. <laughs> now, one thing that's happened in recent decades is the mainstreaming of porn, particularly thanks to the internet. I mean, we do see it everywhere. But, uh, I mean, what impact is it having on women's bodies? Because there was an article in the New York Times recently written by the author, Jennifer Weiner, about the fact that it's had a rather negative uh, impact on the way in which we view our bodies. Uh, for instance, uh, we're, you know, many women now have Brazilians to remove all pubic hair, and there's even surgery on a, a labia to ensure that it's uh, symmetrical. I'm not sure this whole thing only has to do with the internet. I think basically um, um, there are always new markets and, um, and, and, and the industry likes to cater to women. I mean, the more you infantilize women, the more business you get out of it, basically. Um, I think that, um, that, for instance, talking about the hair, um, yeah, um, removing hair has become 
Um, why it, it has been said that it was mainly due to porn movies, I don't think so. Mainly because only uh, one third of the women watch porn movies, so uh, it wouldn't be enough to. Uh, but isn't it the case that maybe their male partners are insisting that uh, it would be better for their sex lives if indeed you know the hair was removed? Well, I think that a woman that would do that to uh, please her man is a woman that is not really in charge of her own pleasure, and therefore there's no need for her to watch porn or, um, or um, just worry about these issues because she has decided that his pleasure came first. Uh, it is a way to treat women as children because uh, without a pubic hair, um, she, she looks like a child. So um, I'm, I'm particularly concerned because we talk so much about pedophilia. How can on one hand you'd be um, so severe, and, and I understand that with all that has to do with pedophilia, and on the other hand, make sure that women's bodies really resemble uh, children bodies. This is a major confusion there. Can you be a feminist and watch pornography? I do think so. I think that you, if you are a feminist, you definitely need to watch them and make them. Uh, only to, uh, I mean, it's a power. Sex is definitely a power. But you the have industry to have it. is very. I mean, it's you know, it's for women involved in the industry. There's many problems. I mean, you know, you've got horrific cases of many women who suffer as a result of working in the industry. I would say that um, it occurs in many industries. I, I think that um, actresses in regular movies have some issues too because... But um, there's exploitation. Everything is exploitation. Um, that's why I think we need to get involved and, and we need to make our own. And that's the only way to change things around. Sophie Bramley, I'm terribly sorry we've run out of time. Thank you so much for being with us. And that's it for now, and if you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page, that's France 24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far, and please keep those comments coming in. Until our next program, bye for now.